Hello and thank you for joining this online training session. In today's session I'll be showing you the most important things you need to know in order to become familiar with using HP Service Manager. This course is appropriate for generic and customized Service Manager environments including bp for sm The presentation and this video are both licensed under a share alike Creative Commons license. Logging in and general orientation. To access Service Manager you will go to a URL in your web browser. This will end in something like index.do. This is the usual client for most users. However, there will also be another interface which ends in accessible.do which is designed to be used by people with disabilities. You can use the accessible interface if you're uh, blind or visually impaired because it is deliberately developed so that it is readable by the JAWS screen reader. Menus are expanded out fully and uh, can be navigated through by voice control. If you're partly visually impaired, then the larger fonts in the accessible interface may be helpful. Alternatively, if you uh, find using a mouse painful or difficult, perhaps because uh, you suffer from RSI, uh, then you can use tab navigation between fields. Uh, all the navigation within the accessible interface can be done without use of a mouse. Either way, you will log in at a screen something like this. Be prompted for your username and password, which will often be the same password that you use to log on to the Windows network at your organisation. Let's have a short exercise. Please attempt to log in to Service Manager. If you have any problems with this, please contact your manager or training coordinator or log a service desk ticket to get your access enabled. Generally, there will also be an employee self-service interface, which ends in the same URL but ess.do at the end. This is a stripped-down user interface that employees can use to log their own requests. They can also use this to see the status of their own requests, which obviously saves them on having to phone up to ask questions. In this interface as well, managers can give approvals. There may also be a service catalogue deployed, which provides a number of items that people can order from of standard services that the organisation provides, such as password resets or addition of software. And finally, it may be a place where the knowledge base can be searched. If there are articles that uh, you have written for end users to be able to read, they can search this as they're supplying their own information and logging requests. The top four. When you log in, you'll be presented with a to-do screen. In the to-do screen, you'll see a number of tickets being listed. These are the tickets that have been assigned to you, or if you've chosen my groups to do this, to your teams. You may see several kinds of tickets here. You may see SD tickets. These are interaction tickets or service desk tickets. This is a record that somebody has called. Perhaps they've asked a, a simple question, perhaps they've requested some information, uh, or perhaps they're just asking for some help. Or alternatively, they've called about a more serious problem. You may also see incident tickets. This is a record that there is a fault in a system somewhere, or that there is a matter that is uh, more complicated to handle than a simple interaction. You'll see a very large number of these SD and IM tickets in the system. More rarely, you may see change tickets. If you are asked to be involved in the process of changing a program, an application, or a process, and you could be asked to perhaps review some documents or to be the change owner or to be the champion of the change and make its way through the process, you may see a C ticket assigned to you. Now changes have a well-defined workflow and some of the steps in that workflow involve certain kinds of tasks and these tasks are also visible in your to-do list if you've been assigned a task to perform. Very rarely you may see a problem ticket. Now if you are regularly seeing an incident occur, so for example a system always keeps crashing every Monday or we see a corruption occur on a regular basis with certain kinds of clients. But if you don't know the root cause of this it can be quite a long and time-consuming exercise to investigate this. In fact it may require the help of many teams. This is why we create problem tickets. Problem tickets are long-term root cause investigations that span multiple teams. 
and you may be asked to help in one of these investigations and you'll be assigned a problem task ticket. So problem navigation. Service Manager is quite easy to navigate. You'll see on the left hand side that there are some blue text areas. Choose a module by clicking on one of those blue areas and you'll see the components within it. Many of these may have triangles beside them. This means that there are further expansions that could be done. So if you expand a menu by clicking on the triangle or on the text beside it, you'll see, uh, like folders and subfolders, the components inside it. Finally, when you click on one of these, you'll see the screen goes a little bit grey and there's a little pause, and up comes that function. The Favourites and Dashboards section is mostly for reporting and oversight and management. It gives you uh, views and reports where you can see what's happening in your organisation or in your staff's to-do queues or just about anything that you want to report and think that that's worth saving. The remainder of the options are where you do your recording of work and depending on your role you may see different modules here. Common modules to see is uh, Service Desk, Incident Management, Problem Management, Change Management, Configuration Management. If you happen to be working on a very small screen you may find that some of the forms in Service Manager are a little bit too wide to use comfortably. If this is the case, you'll see two little chevrons at the top right. These minimise the navigation bar. If you then need to navigate afterwards, you can hit the reverse chevrons uh, to open up the navigator again. Thirdly, almost everything you do in Service Manager creates a new tab. If you click on a new module, you'll get a new tab. If you click on a new search, you'll get a new tab. After 15 of these or so, you'll get an error message saying that your web browser may be uh, unable to cope with the number of tabs open. You can keep on going if you're feeling brave, but by then you'll have noticed that the system will be slowing down quite noticeably. To close some tabs, you just hit the X button, or if you have so many open that you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can log out and uh, log back in again, and of course that clears all the tabs. Be aware that it's not guaranteed when you close a tab that you'll be prompted to save your work. Most modules will do this, so Service Desk and Incident do, but some of the more exotic modules do not. Your session will time out eventually, and it will close all tabs, losing all unsaved work. Fourth of the top four, you'll find that the F9 key on your keyboard will wear out quite rapidly. That's because it's one of the most useful shortcuts in Service Manager. Wherever you see a text field with this fill icon to the right of it. So that fill icon is uh, kind of a rectangle with some blue stripes across it, sort of being filled from the little yellow square above. Wherever you see that, that means that the field can be auto-completed. It means that there's a limited number of possible values that can be put in there. So if you start typing, it should be able to complete for you. You use this by hitting Alt F9, or if you don't want to move your hands off the keyboard at all, you can use Tab and Enter to move your focus onto the button. Or if you do like using a mouse, of course, you can click on the Fill button. Whatever you do, this also validates the data in the field. There are only a limited number of valid fields there, and so it'll check that what you've typed does actually make sense. If you see a field with a Fill button, and you type a portion of a name or a portion of a word that is valid in the database, you'll see that auto-completion will happen. If there's more than one possible completion, then when you hit the Alt F9 combination or tab enter, you'll be presented with a list to choose from. Finally, if you leave the field blank, then you'll be presented with a search screen. If you're presented with a list, the list will look something like this. It may not show all the records. In fact, by default, it will only show the first 50. If you want to show more than that, you'll see that there's a little pull-down menu to the right, bottom of the screen. You'll also see that there's a fast-forward and rewind next page, previous page in the middle. You can hit the Count Records button to see exactly how many records there are, even if there are more than 50. Make sure that your navigation bar is visible. If it's not, then make it appear now. If you're feeling very enthusiastic, you could make it disappear again and then reappear if you want to. Look in the Service Desk field for Register New Interaction. Locate the Service Recipient field and start typing your username into it, and then autofill the field. It should complete your username for you. 
Then clear the field and use the autofill to bring up a search screen. Search for your manager in the system. You should be able to find them and that will fill their username. Then finally, decide to do something else and hit the X tab. After you've completed this exercise, you may want to consider listening to the service desk and service requests topic or the incidents topic.